your career in Strider. And the truth God is what it is. You need to turn into the God that you serve. So when you're too much, and in the fire, God is not sure. One thing for sure, and it was that process, God was not one. So thank God for that. But in the middle of the fire, he never abandoned you. Amen? And thank God that he's never going to abandon you. You better praise God right now, my friend, because he will never abandon you in the middle of the fire. Not only fire comes to harm you. Some fire, listen to me, this is going to make it. Some fire comes to get the best out of you. If I would not be kicked out by God out of that ministry, are you ready? I will never be in the place where I met God today. And when I made the decision to become part of this ministry. It means that if I would not be moved out of the other ministry that God planned all of my all my time home first, I will never be your pastor. And whatever blessing God is giving you to bless you, it will never be your heart. Because I was not giving you that. Do you understand? So there's been a day that whatever I say is an encouragement, or it's a blessing to your life or to your family. I will never be here. Thank God. How many of you ready to say, I say, thank God that he took me into the perfect will so I couldn't be in this place. You are doing what God has called me to do and to his destiny. Come on, you better praise God, my friends. You better understand. So what is this vision about? The vision is that you gotta do whatever it takes when God is calling you to do whatever it takes. You have to stand and obey God, even if it let go a lot of glamour for his glory. Do you understand? It's not necessarily about facing sand. Sometimes it's direction that is involved. God trying to do as he pleased. Why? Because he can see around the corner. He can only see the corner. I would encourage you to do whatever it takes. This ministry was built with the mentality with the men, whatever it takes. When I came 50 years ago, the first present that God could have given me, 50 years ago, I was decorating my first office. And he pulled out of his office one frame and put it into my office. That's how my pastor got right. And he went and grabbed something out of his office and put it in my office. You know what it was? It was a frame that still stood there and it said, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Listen to me. I have learned since that day that if I was going to echo what God is doing in this place, I need to live a life of whatever it takes my power. Jesus, God Himself, has a whatever it takes my power. He wouldn't give you His own son. That's why Misha and John Young in a row and had that mentality. And what happened? A whole kingdom came to the feet of Misha. Why? This church is to do whatever it takes. And there's no with transportation. No transportation. They have to show. Staff members, they have to stretch into the next level, picking out people. And not picking out on the route that people are going to fall out. You got to do whatever it takes to And be faithful when you see friends being packed like that coming to church. And some of you laugh because it's funny. But the truth is that you don't even believe. If you have to be in a place where I am right now and travel enough and see enough to see that there are churches right now that every Sunday I mean, I went car, I would preach to them. The trains and the buses are like that going to church on Sunday night. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Recently, we came from Mexico, and I want to thank to you. How many guys miss us? I miss you guys so much. Did you miss us? I miss you guys. I was ministering in Mexico in a place that nobody would say no. It was not only Mexico, but it was Cancun, Mexico. That was something for Jesus, my friend. For those of you who don't know, it's a paradise, this city. But together with the paradise, how many know there were a lot of people going to visit from another part of the world, there's a lot of need. If you don't believe it, let's go to Manhattan. How about we in the Bronx? Are you with me? The richest city in the world. Now you have the opposite with Brooklyn and the Bronx, a city with the largest need. 
Amen? So that place is a good place to have a meeting. And thanks for your prayer. We established the first Sunday school in Cancun. Now in Mexico, there's been a couple in Mexico. The church are now one. And I saw a prophecy being fulfilled in my life. They said, you will preach in front of governors and presidents. So this week, I had the opportunity to minister to the governor of the city. I was able to minister, to stay lay hands, and get in his family. It was a blessing to see. And then we saw Sunday school being established. We don't have to send people to be praying over there. How many of you guys would like to go to Luther Prayer? Or be your baby, right? <laughs> and send me in, right? Send me in. But I want you to see this video because this shows one more time that when you do whatever it takes at the right time, God will honor you. And I want you to share this and bring you help you to see what happened when you pray. 